Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. So I was searching an older gaming PC because I wanted to check out SLI capable GPUs on the Wicked GPU Gamer channel and also here. But I needed this old test bench and this is a quite interesting one I recently picked up for not a lot of money. With a built-in DVD drive and a docking station for a hard drive or an SSD, this is an old school CM690 Cooler Master. Okay, so let's do a wicked nerdy time with CPU-Z. This thing comes with the Intel Core i7-4790K. So it's also called the codename Haswell and the max TDP of 88 watts. Okay, but I'll find a game, but how does it actually be when it comes to the scores itself? Okay, so when looking at, let's say, the CPU benchmark with Passmark software, actually this is the specification list. So it's also called the Socket LGA1150 and then having the average CPU mark of 8064. Later on we're going to be doing comparison where it's, over, where it's going to be belonging nowadays. So a clock speed of 4 GHz with a turbo of 4.4 GHz, I already mentioned before. It's a TDP of 88 Watt, 4 cores and we're having 8 threads. The CPU benchmark scores with Geekbench, it's going to be the single core 3085 and with the multi-core it's going to be 4400. But what is even more fun is check what kind of the same comparison we're having with newer generations. So the Apple M1, the 8 core 3012 MHz is 14,000 points and going all the way up here we can actually see that the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 has way more points, even more the double of the Core i7 that we're having over here. So when comparable with newer generations, yeah, it's getting quite old now. Well, let's take a close look at some more information, for example, the main board. So this is the Asus, the Maximum 7 Ranger, there's a PC Express 3.0. Memory, we're having dual channel at the moment, DDR3, and the graphic is the GTX 1660 Super with a TDP of 125. So, there's old stuff, but let's push it. Let's see what we can actually do with it when it comes to playing games and emulation. So, when it comes to the machine itself, I bought it for the spare parts. Actually, I'm just going to leave it as it is at the moment, but later on, maybe we're going to put it on a touch bench. In combination with the OCZ 700 watt power supply, we can use this thing with a couple of GPU combinations, but we need to have, have a, let's say, a more powerful one in the future. Next up, we have the Corsair water cooling system. This thing is absolutely amazing and keeps the CPU cool and dual channel memory. This is like these low profile ones, nothing fancy over there. The Maximus 7 Ranger is absolutely a beautiful looking board and I'm very glad to have this one in my collection in combination with the GTX the 1660 Super from Palette. Unfortunate, the brackets are not here. I asked the seller, but he didn't own any of them anymore. So that's a little bit of an annoying thing, but it happens when you're having used parts. The cable management is not bad at all. Uh, I must say that I cannot do a better job. I have two Samsung drives configured, one for Windows 7 and another one for Windows 10. But I'm going to be using Windows 10 now. The Windows 7 over here is here. I just left it. I don't think it comes in handy maybe in the future because this is going to be absolutely one of those better test benches I'm building. So this is the PC that we're going to be using. I didn't do anything besides having cleaning. This thing was in pristine condition and I'm very glad to own this in my collection. Nevertheless, let's take a close look at some gaming and some emulation. How far can we actually push it? But if you're a huge fan of indie games and older games, they can be running perfectly on a machine like this, even if it's quite old. You can even see that I'm hitting sometimes 500 FPS. And Europe, there are many games on Steam that you can just play without any hassle with this configuration. Enemy casualties confirmed. <laughs> so one of the games I love to try out is the Crash Bandicoot Trilogy. I'm testing this game out because I just love the Crash Bandicoot games, but also it's a very cool game to actually use on, let's say, your PC. 
But where we have like a lot of different machines tested out in the past, this is one of those games that I would love to test out on mini PCs or gaming rigs. But so far, the overall gameplay is quite nice, even on Full HD and all specifications set to high. But in the end, the configuration let us play a lot of older games, especially when it comes to, of course, the GPU. So then I wanted to see, let's push it, and let's check out what we're going to have with the modern games, AAA games, and how will they run, and how will the overall gaming experience will be. Some games, especially like the new ones, we can also tweak it to have it to the low and medium setting. But I just want to put everything on high and just see what happens. Let us begin. Let me have some fun. With a very old combination, I just wanted to see how far we can push it with a game like God of War. Where I have the setting maybe not to the ultra settings, the game is still playable and looks quite nice. And this is one of those great cases that you can actually see that this is absolutely just great that we can play these old games. Looking to the CPU GPU combination, I do get the feeling that the CPU is absolutely a bottleneck for the GPU at this point. For Windows Gaming, I'm quite surprised by the overall result which you're getting with such a cheap device. But yeah, the question remains of course, what can we do when it comes to emulation? How far can we push it? Because that would be absolutely great if you can have like an amazing overall performance on emulation and have the gameplay what we're having already now. So we're starting off with some PlayStation 2 emulation, 4K upscaled resolution. And you can just actually see with an old PC and a nice graphic card, we can all do it without any problem. Even the CPU doesn't even have any problems going on further with the game, but let's do a quick gameplay. Round two, fight. A significant difference when you're looking at previous load times with PlayStation 3, especially with the newer generation of Intel CPUs and AMD, is almost instant when it comes to loading up. And with some older CPUs, we just need to wait a little bit longer than normal. But if you want to get in some PlayStation 3 emulation, it's not going to be an issue with this PC and this older Sphere generation Intel chipset. What you do need to take consideration, depending on how much you want to upscale it, but also what kind of game you actually want to play. When it comes to PlayStation Portable, here we have the absolutely amazing overall performance. 
every setting have been set to the maximum, even including the upscaling and all the games of the PlayStation Portable run pretty smooth. And also they look absolutely amazing. With some overall great performance, I can just really enjoy myself PlayStation Portable on a bigger television this way. But take consideration if you experience some dips, you can always mess around with the settings by pressing into the certain button you have mapped to. Can go to the settings over here and we can mess around with the settings. We can implement frame skip if you don't want to do anything else, but you can also check out the rendering and resolution and all the other things if needed. Fight. <laughs> So when we do have amazing PlayStation 3 emulation, the Xbox 360 is just way too much for this machine and cannot really handle it with a stable 50 or 60 FPS. So this is absolutely a no-go. We do have overall better performance than most of the mini PC I've been testing now. But again, it's old hardware, but still, the overall performance is not really enjoyable and playable. <laughs> But okay, so when you're looking at some Crash Bandicoot, it seems to be running just okay. Do have some frame dips going on, but this has something to do maybe with the compatibility and the emulator version. But beside that, we did have some amazing overall performance with F0GX. And when you're looking at these old specifications, we can just play so much cool stuff. And you can always start tweaking, pulling down the internal resolution 1080p or 2K and having an amazing overall performance there. I don't know how the market is in your area or maybe your country, but in my country we do find the option sometimes to pick up some very cool older PCs. I bought it for testing GPU, so join me on the Wicked GPU Gamer for more testing regarding that. But the overall performance, it's quite surprisingly good and we can still play a lot of cool games. Even if it's like indie games or AAA games or you just want to do simulation, there are a lot of many options that you can just do with an old PC like this. Old hardware can still be used for many cool, let's say, different things. And, of course, emulation is one of them. Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing. Check out my Wicked GPU Gamer for more stuff about PCs and GPUs. And it will be great to see you in the next video.